Uh, we're going to kick it off with um, uh, you know, an operational update uh, provided by Holly. We're going to talk about DrupalCon Latin America. We're going to get an update from our new CTO. I think this is his first board meeting. Um, and then we're going to talk about the uh, community elections process. And then we're going to switch to executive session for reviewing um, and getting an update on the cash flow and revenue update. So any other topics which we should add? No? All right. Then I'll uh, give it to um, to Holly. Thanks, Dries. Uh So welcome to the month of May, in which we will discuss the month of April. Um, so lots of stuff going on, not the least of which is uh, our new logo, which you can see on the new board packet, which we're very excited to have. Looks really awesome, reverse out of things. Uh, so we're excited to have that. Um, but uh, that is just a small update. We had lots of stuff going on this last month. Um, and I think one of the most important things coming out of April is that we got the, um, the managers together here. So the, um, Josh, the CTO, uh, Megan, the associate director, um, Stephanie who runs community programs, Joe who runs marketing, uh, and Chris who um, oversees operations uh, together for a uh, long week of meetings uh, as we start to get ready for 2015 and beyond. So um, lots of planning is going on right now to set the stage for next year and the years after, which we're really excited to start doing. Um, and to complement some of that work, um, you remember, may remember that we talked at the end of January uh, about one of the sort of key questions that keeps plaguing the association is what is the role of the association vis-a-vis -vis the community and all of the work that we undertake. Um, and uh, we formed a small committee of board and staff to help try to tackle that question with the community. Um, and they've done a number of one-on-one -on -one stakeholder interviews um, about that very question. Uh, and we have developed a survey, a survey that is based on the RACI model, but a little bit simplified, um, that we're about to launch out to the community um, to get some feedback uh, about you know, where those lines should be. So um, we're continuing to work towards a clearer answer there, and that'll definitely help us with our long-term planning as well. Uh, so that work has been happening for sure. Um, and then I think one of the key areas that we continue to focus on here, it's a, it's a continues to be a risk, is just being able to hire fast enough. Um, and we're really thrilled that um, Oliver Davies just joined on May 5th as a second developer for the association. And um, he's already got a couple of commits under his belt, which is awesome. <laughs> and uh, that will, you know, hopefully help us continue to accelerate the work of the tech team. Um, we also were able to make an offer out for a DevOps role. So we're fingers crossed that that comes back positively and we're able to announce a hire there very shortly. Um, and that's really gonna help because so much of our work this year is just getting our infrastructure um, set up to improve the performance of Drupal.org um, and to align with the security recommendations that we got back from the consultant last spring. So, you know, Rudy's definitely done a tremendous amount to move us forward there, uh, but there's a ton more to do um, in, you know, building out that infrastructure to support, uh, to, to uh, make those improvements uh, is, is really key. Uh, and then, of course, because we are thinking about 2015, 16, and 17 already, those guys are going to have to then, you know, turn around and really make sure all that infrastructure is optimized for where we're going to grow. So we want to get those people on board. So that's good progress. Um, and then we have a number of other positions that are up. And so if you go to association.drupal.org slash jobs, you can see all the listings that are posted there. Um, the, the strategy that um, we have employed is just to put out all of the openings we might have on a tech team and see where we get really good candidates. Um, and one area where we have a number of leads is um, in the UX role. And so that's good because we have a number of leads. <laughs> but the hiring overall still is, is kind of slow. Uh, and we're just really working to flush that team out as quickly as we can. So, so that's, uh, you know, that's one big risk that continues to be out there. And we're just you know, pulling as hard as we can to get that done. 
So I want to highlight that, that area. So the sort of general stuff, we've been focused on the future, really around the racy and values work that we talked about back in January uh, and hiring. Um, and then if we dive down into some of the programs a bit, um, I'm just going to look at, uh, uh, I'm going to skip down to the uh, DrupalCon updates. So Austin's on track. We're managing that budget really well. Um, so I think there's nothing there that should be super surprising for folks. Um, but I did want to touch on Amsterdam. Uh, when we were able to launch Amsterdam, we definitely had some issues um, related to commerce and, and the commerce um, configuration. And at the time that we wrote the packet, they were still, they still existed. Um, Josh and the tech team and Steph Elhaj were able to work those issues out. Things are, things are working well now. Um, but I just want to highlight that because I think one of the key things this um, organization is going to have to do is figure out how to make a DrupalCon site and store rollout uh, much simpler. Th this is an incredibly heavy lift every time we do it. Uh, so we're going to be strategizing ways to um, you know, maybe have a DrupalCon site. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and things like one commerce store where all of your commerce experiences related to the association happen so that we don't have to repeat these things every time. And, you know, thankfully with some tech leadership, I think we're in a place to address those things and that would help us avoid these kinds of issues in the future. So, um, so that's been, um, that's something on the con side to point out and you'll hear a little bit more about Latin America later. So we'll get into that. Um, and then if we look at some of the, um, the Drupal.org statistics, um, you know, here, uh, one thing that I want to point out as a nice highlight, um, is that we do have a metric around responsiveness and the issue cues, making sure that when people post something, it is responded to in 48 business hours so that, you know, they don't feel like they're shouting in the wind. Um, and you'll recall a couple of months ago, um, we were able to, well, about a month ago, we were able to um, employ uh, part of uh, Liz, Liz's hours here. Uh, so she was ready to come back to work full time. Uh, so we used her, her other 50% capacity to work on the issue queues. Um, and we're really excited because we just saw a huge jump in the responsiveness having Liz on board. So we're able to meet that goal now, which is really wonderful. And so hopefully the community really feels that investment too. Um, she's just really great at what she does there. Um, and will that be a, will that be a continued uh, continued uh, portion uh, a portion of her job description? I don't know if it'll continue to be a portion of her job description, but we will continue to have this role filled. If that makes sense. So That's like, great. Yeah, going into 2015, we might shuffle the deck a little bit, um, but this is a role that will continue to be filled. So yeah, so hopefully the um, community. Holly, can I ask a really stupid question there? It's like, is it just, is Liz just getting in there and saying, yeah, I heard you, awesome, we'll do something about that, or is she read, is she like bringing attention to things, or it's probably too much in the weeds. You can ignore it. I'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, she is definitely looking for those trends and things that need to get escalated to the tech team to actually address. So there's a bit of an escalation path. Um, and also, I think she's been about to meet, or has been, or is about to meet with the tech team and basically say, here's some trends that we're seeing in the queues. Yeah, each week. Great. And um, and so so they're getting sort of that metadata look at the queues, which is important for the tech folks, right? Because they're so focused on one issue at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and then there's things that she can actually respond to, like I will help you reset your password or or whatever it is, and she she does respond directly to a number of things as well. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So there's that issue responsiveness. Excited to see that number in the green. Um, we continue to see numbers around, you know, engagement numbers like commits and comments, you know, down in the red. And, uh, you know, our theory there is still that, you know, we're waiting for, a, you know, a Drupal 8 release. Um, we set some goals thinking that Drupal 8 would be out at some point and that, you know, these numbers are definitely tied to that release. So. We'll see what happens there. Um, and then we we talked about page uh, response time uh, in the last meeting, just to let you know, like it continues to go down, which is great. Although it started so high, the number's still in the red uh, for the year. Uh, but we're just a couple of weeks away, probably from standing up the CDN in front of Drupal.org itself. Uh, and we think that will just accelerate the um, responsiveness even further. 
Um, and then I think just one other note on the on the tech team to highlight is just you know also in April, um, as I, I think I joked somewhere that we have to stop um, indoctrinating our employees in this way. Uh, but just after Josh started, we had the heart bleed security incident. Mm. So just want to point out they spent a fair amount of time responding to that um, that as well and uh, did a really great job handling that quickly and professionally um, and definitely got a lot of kudos from the community for, for dealing with that well. So um, we're excited to be beyond that for sure. So those are some of the highlights in the tech area. Any questions about the, the tech team and Drupal.org? Awesome. Okay, and then I'm going to move on to um, some revenue updates because community stuff just all looks good and there's words on the page that you can read. Um, so revenue, um, as you are aware, uh, we are working on um, increasing our revenue opportunities or diversifying our revenue streams so that we're not all about the cons. Um, and Megan's team has done a really good job of um, selling established programs like the Supporting Partner Program and growing those, um, which has been really wonderful. And we have a couple of new things coming online this year as well, including the job board. Um, the minimum viable product should be out by Austin, and the um, it's looking really wonderful, <laughs> which I'm very excited about. Um, Cheeky Muggy's been really great to work with. Um, and so we will have that out there and you'll start to see that revenue hit this summer uh, into our, uh, into our P&L. Um, and then I think the really key thing on the revenue side is, you know, we also know that there's a lot of potential for advertising on Drupal.org. Um, and I, I want to be careful here and say, you know, again, we don't, when we say there's a lot of potential for advertising, we don't mean there's a lot of potential to put an ad on every page of Drupal.org. But we think there's a ton of potential to deliver advertising um, in, uh, you know, a contextual way in certain parts of the site, like never the issue queues, right? We get that. Um, and we've experimented with that this year, right? We're expanding the scope of the hosting listings um, and shaking up the strategy a little bit there. And Megan's team has done a great job thinking that through and executing. And that's definitely um, increasing the revenue from hosting listings, which is going to be fantastic. Um, and then on the advertising side, uh, what we introduced this year were um, ads on a couple of the landing pages. So we've got the Drupal 8 landing page and a site builder landing page. And um, we have a couple of sort of cornerstone uh, folks who have purchased ads on those landing pages, um, which is great. And we think there's a ton of potential there, but we have to push up the, the SEO um, and you know, amount of site traffic on those pages which we're poised to do when we hire a content manager, that will go a long way. Um, but we think there's some more. And in 2015, to like really continue to, to do the work that we want to do, we have to grow revenue even more. Um, and, and, and we're going to talk about this at the retreat, but I just, I just want to say that we're, we're definitely thinking that we're going to have to push harder now to get more expertise on board to really grow that part of our program out, the advertising part of our program out, um, the right way uh, to make the big numbers. So we can feel the potential is there. Um, we don't have advertising expertise. Um, you know, people who deliver those services in-house. We are working on getting all the information we need, but um, we're definitely going to have to do a bit of a hard pivot and probably focus on that uh, a lot for the rest of the year to really be able to generate the kind of revenue we want to for 2015. Questions about that? Do we have a sense of what the percentage of revenue uh, from advertising that we want uh, for, for the, uh, for the uh, um, association? You know, I haven't thought about it in those terms, but if I, if I, I could do some math, <laughs> let's call it 1.5 divided by 7, whatever that is. It's that percentage. Because <laughs> I don't have a calculator handy. <laughs> You're tiny. Um, yeah, 20%. No, that's 20%. Okay. Yeah, I think 20 to 25% sounds about right. And that's super back of the envelope, so don't, um, you know, 
I would, I would not consider that number final. Other thoughts on that? Okay. Um, then the last thing that I just want to um, – <laughs> Oh, good. Angie's found a, another thing that we need to fix. Um, uh, but the last thing that I wanted to highlight, <laughs> sorry, was just to just to point out a couple of other bright spots. Just um, Joe's work with the marketing folks. Um, all of our social and email metrics are um, really good, like just really solid. Um, and you know, we're going to be doubling a bunch of numbers this year. So I think the um, reach of the association is growing very quickly, um, and that's. That's great news, and I, I really like to see that. We're going to be able to talk to more people about what we're doing and what's going on, and, and that can only be good stuff for the community. So I was excited about those things. And those are all the highlights I have. Did you guys have questions about anything else in the packet? You know, it's very clear. Okay. All righty. So I think we can move on to the next topic, which I believe was the DrupalCon Latin America. Yes, Is that going to be presented by Stephanie or, or you, Holly? Uh, yeah, Stephanie's going to present that. So Steph, you should be online now. Hello. Excellent. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. So. Um, yeah, Latin America uh, DrupalCon is moving right along. Um, we have a strong team in Bogota that is uh, uh, is very excited and engaged. Um, and uh, so I just thought I'd kind of go through and talk to you a little bit about what we're what we're doing. Uh, we're going to be in Bogota, as I just mentioned, uh, February 10 through 12. What we're looking at is a two-day con with one day of sprints, so three days total. No training, um, no CXO, um, just just the sessions, two days for two days, and uh, a sprint. We're expecting approximately 400 participants. That's um, uh, and the the um, team is uh, working to do a lot of outreach to all of the countries in the area to uh, see, you know, to really try to maximize participation. We're also talking about. Um, Creating a little video like what what is the difference between a DrupalCon and a camp? Because evidently they're they're saying that folks aren't really clear um, about the difference. So we want to uh, give them some materials to um, to use, and I think we'll just do a webinar and then record it. Um, so that's one of the ideas we're we're looking at. Uh, okay, next slide. Um, the project team, so myself and Lauren, uh, Lauren has uh, stepped up, uh, it's not her her normal, it won't be her normal role, but she will be uh, doing the coordination for Bogota for us, uh, and um, she's doing a great job of rallying the team. We also have, uh, we have Carlos uh, Ospina in um, Houston, who is from Bogota, uh, and then Aldebar, um, Working, we're working very closely with them, um, and we have some other folks too that I'll mention in a little bit. Um, so uh, this just gives an overview of the program. Uh, so there will be two keynotes: so Dries, you, and uh, and then one uh, one other keynote. Forty sessions over the two days, and then one day of sprinting. Okay, next slide. Um, Lauren is uh, ma looking at manage. She's managing, you know kind of coordinating with the content team. Uh, she'll be in charge of Box. Uh, she's the design lead and then uh, website content editor. Um, of course, all of this she's never done, so <laughs> we're mentoring closely and, uh, and working with her to, to, uh, to get all of this done. Diana we're bringing in just for pre-planning, so she won't be on site, but uh, she will be assisting. She'll be going on the site visit and uh, she'll be assisting with, uh, with all of the logistical pre-planning, including how to manage registration and those kinds of issues. Okay, next slide. 
Um, this breaks out who's doing what on the local team. So Carlos is the community lead. Aldebar is oops. Aldebar is the content lead. Um, and Donna and um, thank you and Pedro have both uh, agreed to assist. And uh, it, in terms of assist, uh, we mean just help identify those. Um, those speakers outside of the area, of the local area, that the community, that the Latin American community wants to bring in so that we make sure we're keeping this uh, con, uh, that, that it has the quality of a con and not just a, a local camp, you know, so we're going to be looking at who we can invite to, uh, to play and to present content. Um, Fernando is the sprint lead, uh, Ivan the volunteer lead, and uh, Jairo, Julian, Nick, and Alejandro um, are all on the planning committee. So we're bringing in uh, Sao Paulo, um, Brazil, and um, Jairo has been very instrumental in um, working out the sponsorship packages with Megan. Uh, so he, he and Megan have been working on pulling that piece together. This is just a kind of a list of where we are, what's happening. Uh, the designer um, is uh, Felipe Rios, uh, and he he has the front-end designer, uh, Hernan. The two of them are kind of the design team, and uh, the visuals are very pretty that they're coming up with. Uh, so Josh, on our end, is working with them, uh, we're all working to make sure that the timelines are being met and that uh, they understand exactly what that workload is to uh, to have the site built, uh, as well as the other uh, design content. Uh, content team is in the process of being put together, and all of the track chairs are uh, being selected. Some have been identified; others have not yet. Um, Splash page I'll show you at the end. We have uh, we have a copy of it. It's beautiful. Um, volunteers, uh, Lauren's engaging a lot of folks. The additional keynote ideas are being generated, um, and uh, Dries will be um, talking to you about that. There, what they would like to do there, and um, sounds good. Yeah, and uh, and then venue options. We have three venues that uh, we're going to be seeing on the site visit, and then we'll be um, landing on uh, on the on the site. Uh, that site visit is scheduled for uh, right after um, Austin, well, early July, July third. Actually, we'll be going to Bogota. Um, so the risk and mitigation, you know, the challenges of this uh, third con um, clearly is budget, I would say, is the first uh, major risk or consideration. Uh, the challenges are that we have uh, low sponsor revenue opportunities, uh, lower than we're used to, uh, and we need to keep the ticket price low um, because of the area. So we're really looking at every angle we can to end at a break-even for this event. Uh, and it's it's going to be challenging, but that's that's the goal, is to is to break even. Um, the site build and getting content on the site. Um, this is a con that uh, internally that we uh, we're really trying to manage um, for the first time, you know, without uh, Steph El Hajj's assistance, and she's of course mentoring. Uh, Lauren, um, but we have we just have some challenges of how to get get the site up, and that's we're working those bugs out. And Josh has been great at um, at helping work through those issues. Uh, and then the other kind of challenge is the that it's a it's a different con than we're used to putting on, right? Because there's so it's um it's it's kind of in between how a camp organizes with the community and then how we do DrupalCon. So we're, we're finding those places that we can really engage the community and have them take ownership of, of big pieces uh, that we usually have ownership of and making that work. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's more grassroots and we want to make sure that there's the sophistication of a DrupalCon. 
uh, with the event, and and I, I and I have no doubt we're going to achieve it. Um, because so it feels a little bit like it's it's like the early days of the of of DrupalCon, like when we were in uh, in Barcelona and so forth, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think so. Um, and you know, this kind of continues to bring up the question of what differentiates a DrupalCon from a camp, you know, as well, an example. Is, so. It, yeah. it sounds a, a bit to me here like we're not going for a camp, we're going for a glor uh, um, glorified DrupalCon, Drupal camp, not for DrupalCon. No, we're definitely going for a DrupalCon. But we're, we're doing that with, you know, it sounds like we're not even turning on the engines. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah, Morton, can you be specific, please? Okay, I was, um, so um, it, it seems like normally if we go in and do a DrupalCon, uh, we have sprints before and after. We have full staff on. Um, it seems like here that we're going in with, with people who are, as you said, uh, we're not going in with the normal people um, that are doing DrupalCons in both Europe and the States. Um, so we're doing a smaller event. Um, we're still calling it a DrupalCon. I'm, I'm, uh, this, this goes back to my Morton, northern... Morton, yeah. take your northern hemisphere you, imperialism and put it somewhere else. This is about developing an emerging market. It, it, it's like it, Disney it, was it, the it, same deal. Well, data. How, how, <laughs> honestly, I think this is a very, very disrespectful. It is, honestly. but it's also like uh, it's we a, have to it's start a somewhere. Public board meeting, yeah. I'd like to remind everybody, please. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I think that, 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 was, that was a little bit too disrespectful. Um, I apologize. What we're asking for is how come that we go and we say we're going to do a DrupalCon and we're not going in full blown? But we are going in full blown, Morton. I'm not sure what you mean. What we what we have determined with these third cons is that they are different in that um, they're going to be a different size. We have to uh, gauge the size based on the community. Mm -hmm. We have internal resources that we have to. Um, Manage, and uh, we don't have uh, we don't have the capacity for um, specifically, uh, you know, um, uh, Stephanie who works on the other two bigger cons. She doesn't have capacity to take on the third con. And yeah, that's no, just that, that's what, exactly what, what it is. No, that, yeah, that's, so so that's my fear <laughs> about that, that we're going we're going in with a, with a voice that says, hey, we're going to do a Drupal con, but what we're actually ending up is doing a Drupal camp that could just as well be done by locals and then we would support them instead. So it will give another idea of what it is that we're doing. So people outside who doesn't know the difference will say, oh, we're going to go to this glorified Drupal con. And instead of it being like bells and whistles, it's going to be a camp with a little bit on top of it. So they're going to end up being well, disappointed and say, hey, this wasn't what we were expecting. Well, it mm. seems like it's more than a camp to me. And yes. so the way I look at it is, Yes, it's going to be, maybe it's going to be a little bit like a camp for the first time, but we're sort of, you know, it's the first time we do it, we're going to use a DrupalCon brand. It's not going to be like a DrupalCon in North America, but it's going to, it's going to get us there and hopefully the DrupalCon the, the, the brand, the reason I'm, I'm, let, me, let me finish please. Yeah, sorry. Hopefully the DrupalCon brands will attract people from all around South America versus just, you know, one country or in a bit of few people from other countries. And I think that's something that the DrupalCon name will do. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just strap it and grow it. And so that's gonna so, take it's gonna take a while. And I think we use you know, we adjust the budgets based on where it is. So um, I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm still excited per, about it. Personally I'm, I'm just afraid that uh, no we, we did mistakes two years ago that did um set a lot of things back and and you know, it's just just me being worried. Yeah, Martin, um, I can appreciate you being worried, and I think that's worth worth listening to. And I think um, it would be helpful for me to get some more, like, really clear specifics. And, and you know, maybe it would help for us to talk in, in more detail than, than you know, we would normally, like, present at a, at a board meeting. So I'm totally yeah, happy. Yeah, no, I know. That's, that's, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm only touching on the top of it. Uh, and I'm trying to keep it as, as yeah. top level as possible. And well, just, there's just... It's just things around it, and a little bit like, hey, there's the. Well, we can we can talk about that later on. I can try to be more specific. Yeah, um, let's schedule let's schedule a follow up so we can just hear like specifically. Are you worried that you know specifically what you're worried about, so that we can we can figure out. Yeah, I, I'm, know, yeah basically, I'm simply worried that we're not make, gonna make enough punch, and we're gonna create um, 
another failure in South America, and, and I would hate that. Yeah, we would that's also hate that. We sure I know would. That, and that's why I'm <laughs> I'm speaking out now instead of waiting you know, four months. <laughs> Right, I yeah. feel though like like this is being this is being approached in a much more methodical and sensitive way than than uh, than the previous foray, and you know that that's coming from from being a guy that watched the previous attempt um, from the outside, well, and now you know, one of the things I'm worried about is that, um, uh, and I'm I'm trying to I've been looking down to meeting meeting. Uh, uh, meeting minutes and I missed the meeting back in February and I never remember us uh, voting for these for this venue or for this uh, being in Bogota and I'm kind of like how did that came around I'm not saying that it was a wrong decision I'm just saying that that was one of the things that we saw two years ago that suddenly we there has been a decision of a place and well Morton I can I can assure you that it wasn't sudden this time we had a number of conversations face to face and online with the community. So, okay, no, but let's, one thing. Let's take it online because you know, I, I feel yeah, like. Let's do that. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Great. Yeah, and we we have uh, every in, we have every intention to create a successful DrupalCon in Bogota. I assure you, um, and and we will make sure that that happens. Um, next slide. Uh, Holly, <clears throat> thank you. And then I just wanted to show you this is uh, this is the splash page. Uh, we're just adding the year <laughs> uh, on here, but um, good point. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, I thought that might be helpful. But uh, Felipe is just uh, really um, do doing some beautiful work. So uh, yeah, we're we are um, we're full steam ahead. We're putting a lot of attention on this, Morton, and we're figuring out what those pitfalls are um, and I'm, how I'm to just, and how to work through them so I'm glad yeah. to hear that yeah yeah so um, yeah so that's that's the update right looks like origami a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> I like it I really love it <laughs> thanks Stephanie I like Super well. appreciate the, um, the time you put into this you bet. I think just to finish the topic, I think one other thing which sets this apart from a Drupal camp is the fact that, you know, I think a number of us, including myself, are, are really committed to this and, you know, we're going to go there as well and, and you know, hopefully that will help bootstrap Drupal count as well. So, yeah. You know. Um, you know, with that said, let's move on to the next topic, which is an, uh, an update. Um, you know, from our new CTO. Do you guys see what I mean about how good this logo looks reversed out? What can I say? Look good. <laughs> Holly, Holly, are you, are you going to be angry at me if I say if you put a red and white behind it, it, sound, it looks directly as the Google Hagen logo? All right. We're going to have a conversation. <laughs> All right, so for you guys, for those of you who haven't met him yet, here's Josh. Hi everybody, I'm Josh, Josh Mitchell. A um, little bit about me, uh, my previous role was with uh, Multnomah County here in uh, Portland, Oregon, um, doing IT applications management for our enterprise web and library services. Um, really large scale Drupal sites that we can place uh, at the county. And I'm getting much better, as Holly likes to point out, at not saying we when referring to Multnomah County, because now I say we when referring to the Drupal Association, which is important. Uh, there's a little bit of my contact information on here as well. Um, but mostly I wanted to give you guys um, an opportunity. If I haven't had a chance to talk to you yet, um, let's, let's please do try to connect and uh, um, have an extended conversation about kind of the direction that we're looking to take things. Speaking of the direction that we're looking uh, to take things, um, I'm, you know, I'm about six weeks, seven weeks into uh, the position now, and I'm beginning to get an opportunity to kind of see what we have and what we need to move towards. And so these are a few of the things that I kind of want to put out to you and uh, kind of get your feedback on as well. But uh, first of all, we're we're shifting the thinking of our tech team from uh, what's the next thing I can tackle in the issue queue. Um, 
because there's uh, there's a lot of noise that occurs in the HGQ, and it's often a case where you get pulled one direction and then you get pulled another direction. Um, and what we want to really shift our thinking to is small projects that have the prioritized issues attached to that project. So, um, I'm sorry. A, uh, You're good. basically a, a, a little bit more um, planned out work rather than always approaching it from what's the next, next fire burning uh, that we've got to turn our attention to. Um, and that gets a little bit easier as we hire up and we've been talking about the hiring and I think that's going to be a, a big portion of this is to get some full-time staff on board that can um, participate in that way. What that will allow us to do is start running Drupal.org a little bit more like a product um, and less like a contributed open source project. Um, and what I mean by that is, is not, in no way is this meaning to say that the community is not still going to be contributing to Drupal.org. But what it does mean is that we will be a little bit more intentional about these are the, strate uh, the, the strategy that has been set based on the priorities that were set by the board. Um, and by the working groups. And then we'll be able to execute on that um, with a little bit more intention. It, the, the big piece here is while we're doing that, we still have to make sure that we're not excluding um, any volunteers and giving them a respectful way to contribute with structured opportunities that can make a bigger difference um, than the kind of haphazard way that we sometimes approach uh, projects right now. Um, to achieve that, I think we're getting partway there this year uh, with the hiring that we have planned, but we're very much focused on infrastructure this year if you look at the hiring plan. Um, we are planning on adding a little bit of UX, but going into 2015, what we really want to get to the point of being able to do is that every project that we're assigning, we have a developer, a, developer, a UX person, um, it could be a front-end designer, it could be a themer, depending on the skills of the developer and the UX person, and a PM that are on every single project. Um, and I think project management is going to be an important piece of this um, because it tends to be something that isn't a, um, it's not a core skill that we tend to get out of volunteers at the moment. It, it tends to be a skill that people want to work on or that they're interested in helping with. Um, and I think having those project management skills built into the association staff is really going to help push things forward a little bit better. That doesn't mean a PM would necessarily have just one project, but um, they would be assigned a developer and UX person for maybe multiple projects that they were helping to shepherd through. And then, why this is important. Um, what I've heard so far is that uh, we really want the Drupal.org tech team, with the help of the volunteers, to support the entire Drupal ecosystem. Um, I'm big about documenting what it is I'm taking on. And so uh, one, of the first, uh, one of the first things I needed to do was actually go through and create a visual representation of everything that we actually have um, right now that's star.drupal.org. Um, as you can see, it's pretty vast. Uh, we're talking about 35 to 40 um, active sites that are being maintained, plus several key services that uh, really serve as a foundation for other sites to, to do what they need to do. Um, you know, updates.drupal.org isn't really a website, but it's a core structure that we have to have in order to um, have updates, status updates show up on uh, Drupal dashboards uh, for, our, for our users across the world. So I, I say all that so that when, and I show this picture in part to say whenever I ask for more people, and as we look for more ways to do revenue so that we can hire more people, this is why. We have a really big infrastructure to support, uh, and we have a large number of sites to support. I, I think this is also why if we look at things like the DrupalCon sites, um, even maybe Drupal camps, um, we're going to be trying to look at a way to make that one site that can pick up the theme from whatever that, that project is, um, but not necessarily a completely separate installation because that does take a lot of time for us to spin up each and every time. And um, it really kind of divides our focus whenever we start going down that path. But we're also going to add some sites where it makes sense. Um, things like jobs.drupal.org, we're looking at making that standalone 
um, for a couple of different reasons, but in part because we don't want to create confusion around Drupal association jobs. We really want it to be Drupal jobs so that we can really hi highlight that for the community. Um, and store.drupal.org, which gives us an opportunity to have one star that, that truly runs all of our commerce uh, associated with the Drupal, Drupal Association. And you can kind of see a rough timeline that we're looking at there in terms of moving from starting with just selling some gear, uh, next year starting to do registrations, and maybe by the end of the year doing membership. Um, and by 2016, basically anything that we were going to run commerce for, we would do it through the Drupal Store. The last slide we have there is the staffing. Um, these are the types of positions that we're really going to try to bring into the team. Um, but these are just the positions that we have um, posted for this year. I, I don't have any project management positions posted for this year. That's definitely going to be something that we have to address in 2015. Um, but what we are really trying to knock out is um, a, another solid DevOps engineer hire, um, a security and architect architecture engineer that can really help us harden our Drupal environments and help us create the, the great architecture that allows for good integration between all these systems. Um, and then there's three positions up here, the product manager, the user experience engineer, and web designer. I posted all three with the plans that we're going to get the best uh, candidate out of all the applications to those three jobs. Um, and try to see where they fit into what we need uh, for the coming year. Um, lastly, the QA engineer, I think this is, has been, been a key thing that we need to come up with, which is a better way to do our deployments and to test our deployments along the way. Someone who can write both the automated tests, but also can help us really structure our testing plans and help uh, facilitate the community helping us test things on our staging environments. So. Those are the, the key things I kind of want, wanted to walk through. A um, little bit of what I see the direction being that we can take. A little bit of uh, showing you this is kind of what we see that we have to support and the, the structures that uh, are already existing that we need to keep going forward with. And a little bit about the staffing that we're, uh, we're going into for 2014 and some plans for 2015. Any questions? I have two arms in my in, in the air right now, like a scarlet gold. I'm just happy to hear this. Any other? Any question? Well, that was not a question for Martin. No, that was a great no, was friendly, <laughs> friendly <laughs> comment. But any, it was me being other? very happy. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? Nope, just gratitude. Right, well, Josh, great. thanks for coming on board. Well, thank you. Uh, this this, this seems excited. awesome. This makes me happy. Yeah, nice, nice job, Josh. This is a good, good briefing, good first steps, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy to have you as well. Yeah, he's a rock star, you guys. Thank you. Awesome. We may not hire fast, Holly, but we do. <laughs> Looks like we're hiring well. So we did well, cool. yeah. Also, he's a grammar, <laughs> he's a grammar nerd, which I love. Uh -oh. I'm not gonna send any the emails then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's switch to the next item, which is the community election process. Right. Yeah. Thanks again, Josh. Um, good. So, just as a reminder, um, we have, uh, and I, th I think two two reasons I wanted to put this on the agenda. One is just to make sure that it's out in the community, and we'll write more about it. But also, um, I want to get um, get some volunteer help from the board, please. Um, so if you will recall, we had a discussion started that started in Prague, uh, and we've already fixed all of the mechanics around how we re-engineered the elections to uh, elect one candidate to a two-year term staggered every year. Um, and uh, the other thing that we decided to do was to go ahead and push the community elections out uh, into the spring so that we could align them with a DrupalCon so that uh, the new community board member could experience a face-to-face -face meeting very quickly after their, um, after their election. Um, and it's really just not possible to do this in a fall time frame because uh, August is a month that apparently does not exist anywhere except for the United States. 
Uh, and if we were going to do a fall, fall election, we just, we, you know, we were going to run into, you know, having to do candidate recruitment and meet the candidates in August and voting in August. I mean, we just couldn't do those things. So that was why we made this move. Um, and so I just wanted to let you know that uh, we've got a timeline here. Uh, we've got a project plan in place. The team has met to sort of understand what that project is. And this is what it looks like. Uh, so we'll be doing um, technical setup in December and January, and that's just getting the election module up and configured and um, hopefully also prettier this time, uh, which is my way of saying UI and UX improvements. Um, and then we'll do uh, self-nominations uh, the first part of February. So give everyone a chance to, you know, get over the new year panic. Uh, do nominations, uh, do some meet the candidates voting. Uh, and then we um, we have a, March, apparently we have a March 25 board meeting scheduled because I made that date very specific. <laughs> so we'll ratify the votes um, and get that communicated out to the community uh, just a few days after the voting. So that's the timeline we're working with. Um, and just to give you a, um, a just a, a review of some of the things that we're going to be doing on our end, um, we had um, a Drupal 7 upgrade, which meant we had to use different election um, we had, you know, new staff and, and board members getting engaged. So we had to build all the elections in 2013 from scratch again, um, which totally worked. And I really want to give, uh, you know, say hats off to Donna and Pedro for doing the incredible amount of heavy lifting they did to just make it run. Um, but it meant that um, it meant that although we were able to pull it off and it it worked, we weren't able to really improve the process the last time around, um, except for the fact that the board didn't have to do all of the work. So um, in, uh, you know, this time around, we should be able to make some of those improvements because we've been through it once before um, as a staff um, with the same tools. Um, we're going to be lengthening the time of the meet the candidate space and improving the interface for that so that hopefully we have more interaction during that period. Um, and the issue that we really want to work on this year is um, diversity uh, of candidates. So making sure that we have a nice representation, both, um, you know, in all the ways that you can define diversity, but I think particularly, um, you know, globally, um, and then turnout. Uh, so if you recall from 2013, um, we had turnout that was on par with 2011. It wasn't high. It's under 1,000 votes. We need to improve that. So those are the two things in particular. Uh, that we need to really work on this year. Um, and those things I would really love to be able to have some, that's where I want to have the board focus. So in the past, the board had spent a lot of time on these sort of logistical mechanics, right? Like I will schedule a meeting and run a meeting for meet the candidates. We've got staff that can do that this year. And so I really want to put the board brain trust on these more strategic questions of diversity and turnout, um, which I just said all those things on that slide. <laughs> so, um, so we need some folks uh, to work on the election committee, which is a subcommittee of governance um, to provide feedback throughout the, uh, throughout the process, really focus on those two issues. Um, and then, you know, I'll be in charge of PM in this, this thing with, um, with the board and staff. Um, and I just need a couple of folks who can really um, engage at those key times to make sure that we have, um, you know, improved our voter turnout and, and have some really good uh, interesting candidates. So that's my I summary. I would love to help with that. Is that Matthew? Yeah. Great. Um, I would say as, as um, I was elected last time and um, then I'm moving for a one year period. Uh, I don't know yet if I'm going to run next year. I'm going to mm -hmm. figure that out. All depends. So um, I would say right now I don't think I could help out. I can, well, it, it, it could create some strange issues if I did. <laughs> True. Um, so so I, I should, um, if people want to have my opinion, go ahead and ask. Um, I still need to figure out with myself if I want to, if I want to run again uh, now that I wasn't uh, I only put it in a one-year term compared uh, to a two-year term. Um, so I need to figure that out first. Okay. The only thing that would be weird, um, Wharton, is if you decide you are going to run again, if you were exactly. on the committee as well. But, but um, no, that would be it, the only thing that's weird. But if you decide that you're not running again, you'd actually be an ideal person to be on the committee. Yeah, I know. It, it all it all depends on, on where we end on this year. So it's it's kind of I'm kind of like on one part I really wanna wanna help out, on the other part I still have issues. 
<laughs> or things not an issue, things I want to work on. So it's kind of like you know, where uh, politics meets practicality. <clears throat> Can I be kind of like an emeritus <laughs> on the committee? I would really like to not be doing the elections this year, having been involved in the past three in one way or another. I, I think if you have done it twice, you don't have to do it again. <laughs> you have yeah. to get away, get off jail but, free time. But I sort of say the emer emeritus, I'm like totally, um, you know, it's, I probably have some um, helpful stuff to input. So, Matthew, maybe if you want to, you know, ping me every now, you know, have a regular ping about it or something or, you know, like have me, for, I don't know, I'll just put that out there. Yeah, I think, Don, it would be great to just make sure you're at the couple of, you know, whatever conversations we have around diversity and voter turnout. Yeah. Um, I mean, it sounds like, you know, you guys are going to be doing the heavy lifting um, anyway, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy to be involved. Great. Great. By, by when do we need the committee assembled? Um, I'm not going to call a meeting till the fall. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, you know, in the October, November time frame is when we're going to do a kickoff um, to um, specifically around these issues so that we can work them into the more full plan. Are you well, do we for... need to be having the, con the conversation with the community about having moved the dates, or are we just kind of going to do it and hope no one notices? No, we definitely do need to have that conversation, so I need to put it out. Uh, there's a bullet here in the timeline to, for a community discussion in May. So I have a, I have a blog post half-drafted that I'll get out there just to tell everyone. I, Here's the I think put it out, and, and also we're going to put it out on the, uh, um, the community summit. And okay. we open it around and say, hey, we're moving the dates because we have changed these things and this is how it is. Good. And if somebody thinks it's a catastrophe and the world is going on, then let's talk about that. I don't think that's going to be an issue, honestly. Um, it's a technicality that we're moving the date and that's how it is done. Yep. Yeah, I think that if we, if we, uh, if we have had had larger percentages of voter turnout in past years, it might generate some buzz. My guess is that uh, most people um, don't even re remember when el the elections are because, uh, um, because you know, just just in terms of, of how 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 it's gone gone down in the past. And um, something I want to table, um, but not discuss now, Matthew, for the governance and for elections in general. Um, I don't know where it came up again recently, but. Um, whether or not the, we should be looking at increasing the number of community elected positions going forward. Um, it, I can't remember the source, but someone else raised this again recently, so I just wanted to say that out loud. It, it, it's been a talk that's been on a couple of times that, uh, and especially with the talk that's been like on, on why isn't the whole board like elected and, and so forth. And, and as I see, there's reasons that the whole board is not elected. To make it work, um, but um, definitely the other part of us figuring out should more be elected on the board is definitely a discussion that's worth, because uh, it's um, it it do do set some question marks um, around that says okay how democratic is this actually and and then you can always go back like well this, this is also about making it work and so forth and blah 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 but. That's a good it topic for the governance committee, I think. Um, for sure. I'm not sure if that's been, you know, tabled for their agenda or not, but you, that's certainly the the right place to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. We we're planning on we're planning on uh, the governance committee is uh, planning on discussing um, terms, and we can certainly bring into into that conversation um, what, what the what the composition of the board might it, what might be optimal. Um, uh, but that's probably that's probably like Donna said. It's probably something to be tabled for the time being. I've got it though. I'm gonna jot it down in our. I have the sort of 2014 master calendar. I'm gonna pop it into one of the months so that it doesn't drop off. Sweet. Yeah. I'm gonna randomly pick a month for now, <laughs> but we'll, we'll figure out where it goes. Okay. Well, good. Matthew and Morton, um, and I think Donna. I think you're just a uh, you know advising capacity would be really really helpful. So I think I think I'm good. Excellent.
excellent. Any other questions on this? All right. Any other questions for the open board session? If not, I think we can uh, adjourn. Um, thanks everyone for participating today. And for the board members and, and Holly, you know, we'll see you in the executive session. So let's uh, switch to that. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.